Before I get into today's video, remember to follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter, the link is in the description below. You can also find me. My handle is at Jackson Kruger. Come over, say hi. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. Let's talk about Jeffrey Simmons. He's someone who has gotten some credit, but probably deserves some more credit as being one of these elite pass rushing interior defensive linemen, right? He's not Aaron Donald. Nobody is. But I think he has put himself in position where he deserves to be talked about with the Chris Joneses and the Forrest Buckners of the world as guys who can just rush the passer effectively from the inside. And let's start things off with a play like this, where he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against a guard. And watch what he's going to do here. Right when this play begins, you see how he's you know, kind of gets his hand just right on the, uh, you know, the upper part of 73 right there. And he's really just going to try to use power here. So the first thing he has is his power. He's definitely someone who can overpower you. And this is going to be an example of it. Watch right when this play begins. That's exactly what he does. Shoves him back, gets to Matt Stafford, gets the sack. Very good play. But now let's move over to something like this, because yes, power is great and all, but let's be honest, there's a lot of interior defensive linemen who have power. The way that you can rush the passer consistently is if you have power paired with athleticism and paired with footwork and speed, quickness, all that stuff. Really, quickness would be the way I would, uh, probably the word I would use the most, not necessarily speed, but are you explosive and can you use that explosiveness and the power to, you know, together to make things happen and this is going to be an example of him really just you know making a great play where first things first he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a center this is a, a good concept to get Simmons a favorable matchup as you have three potential players rushing the passer to the center's left so Matt Stafford he's a smart guy he sees this stuff he's going to say hey center block to your left block Simmons uh, correct decision by Stafford he doesn't get fooled on that stuff too often uh, one of the things that he's underrated about Stafford is that he does protect himself very well. That's irrelevant to this video, though. So back to the video. Uh, Simmons himself. Uh, what, what the favorable matchup is, though, is, listen, for center, you have to just snap the ball and then get over. It's going to take you that little extra time. And Simmons, who I just established is quick, can take advantage of that. Look at how right when this play begins, you see how Simmons is going to be able to very quickly get past the center to where he's in a much more favorable situation. Now, if you were a weaker player, maybe the center could sort of push you to the left side of the screen, give Stafford a little bit of room to step up in the pocket. But the issue is that Simmons is really big and strong on top of this. So not only does he have is not only is he in a favorable situation where you have to basically push him aside. He's a tough guy to push aside. And as you see, I mean, it just does not go over well at all. Simmons is able to get to Stafford and get the sack right there. So it's th that combination. That's really how Simmons is able to win so frequently is because he does both of those two things. And all he needs is one or two of those a game to really have a fantastic game. Like this one's going to be a, a similar example of, again, that kind of the uh speed but also just the the power and this is going to be in a more traditional situation going up one-on-one -on -one against the guard this is going to happen you're going to have to block him one-on-one -on -one sometimes right when this play begins you see how again really quickly gets to a point where he's off to the side to where 51 doesn't really have the hand placement he wants right I mean his left arm is basically not doing anything on Simmons right here and this is exactly what Simmons is trying to do you're in a tough spot. You probably can't stop him straight up. So 51 is going to, I think, probably do the right thing, which is try to just push Simmons off to the side, push him to the left. But he really isn't able to push him that much because it's Jeffrey Simmons. And Simmons then has the quickness after that point to get over, get to Trevor Simeon, and get the sack. So again, similar play, but he doesn't need a favorable matchup to make it happen. But listen, if you give him a favorable matchup, he will certainly take that. So the, the combination of those two things are really kind of how he gets a lot of his wins. Also, I have to talk about the playoff game because despite the fact that the Titans did not win that playoff game, it was, uh, you know, in spite of a great performance by Jeffrey Simmons because he was fantastic. You know, he had three of those thousand sacks that Joe Burrow took in that playoff game. And this is going to be him going up one-on-one -on -one against poor Hakeem Adeniji, who I feel like in every video I make of a deep interior defensive lineman, I end up 
showing a play of someone beating Hakeem Adeniji. Poor guy. Uh, you know, all he wanted to do was just play football for the Bengals. Now some jerk YouTuber, Jackson Krieger Sports, is constantly showing his negative plays. But regardless, watch what's going to happen here. Again, right when this play begins, it's interesting because Simmons will just try to overpower you at times as well. He's so quick and he can catch you flat-footed at times because you do have to be paying attention to, you know, what move he's going to make. And that's kind of the the struggle, I think, and why it can be so difficult. Is you see with energy, it looked like he just wasn't ready for just, hit, you know, uh, Simmons to go pure power here. But you have to always be ready for that. But if you're ready for that, he can go by you. So that's what makes it so tough. Watch Simmons really, I mean, just, you know, overpower Adenergy. And then again, he's like a lion getting over to Joe Burrow, which is ironic because uh, Joe Burrow plays for the Bengals, who are, are a tiger. Uh, so different kind of big cat there. But just an incredible play by Jeffrey Simmons. Again, it's he's definitely one of those guys that, I mean, listen, I couldn't even think dream of blocking anyone who's even played at the college level, probably. May, maybe some college player. Never, certainly not an NFL player. Uh, they would all eat me alive. But look, Simmons is like one of the last guys on the list I would want to have to uh, try to block. It would be painful. And one more thing I should talk about is like, listen, if you have this great player, well, use them in unique ways. You have a big defensive tackle who can move, well, do something like this, where what you're going to do is you have uh, the two players who are lined up to Simmons' right, which is towards the left side of the screen. They're going to kind of run uh, over to try to pull the tackle and guard, the left tackle and left guard, kind of towards the right. And then what you're going to do is have Simmons pull all the way around to where he can potentially get a straight shot to Stafford, really if the tackle does end up moving towards the middle of the field. Watch how right when this play begins, you're going to see that Simmons does a good job of setting up this play. He doesn't let them know what they're doing, which is very important. You have to sell that beginning part of the play. People don't always do that, which can result in the offensive line being able to shift very well, as I mentioned. Stafford does a very good job of helping out the offensive line. The offensive line themselves for the Rams are very smart. So selling this beginning portion, very important. But as you see, watch him swing all the way around. He is going to get to Stafford, who ends up just throwing up a prayer, or trying to avoid the safety, uh, which was not the correct decision by Matt Stafford. Uh, but a great play by Simmons, and it's showing how they're using him effectively. Hey, we have this incredible athlete who is so explosive and so big. Let's use him in unique ways. It just makes sense. I do wonder with Jeffrey Simmons, when will he kind of start to become a household name, so to speak? I guess it's just hard when you're a defensive tackle or an interior defensive lineman in general to really get your name out there, like unless you're Aaron Donald. It you know sucks for everyone that there's the, the greatest defensive tackle of all time that you're playing with right now if you're Jeffrey Simmons. So uh, that obviously plays a role. But, uh, you know, I think that people are starting to realize just how good he is. And I think that, you know, again, uh, when you ask people's opinions on Jeffrey Simmons, they certainly have a bunch of nice things to say for a good reason. Uh, he's, he's incredible. And he means a lot to the Titans defense. And even if they don't always have the best uh, pass rushers around him, they got some good guys. But even if they don't have the best, you can still get pressure because of, you know, not just him, but what the attention uh, someone like him on your team brings. So that's what I think about all this. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on Jeffrey Simmons and the Tennessee Titans? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.